In this video, I'm gonna show you all of Final Cut Pro's favorite features. I don't necessarily mean that all of these features are my favorite features in Final Cut Pro, but that all of these features have to do with favoriting inside of Final Cut Pro. It's going to save you an enormous amount of time if you take the time to build out these presets for really fast editing in Final Cut Pro. The first favoriting feature can be found in the import window, which I'm gonna to get to with Command-I. You'll notice here on the left hand side there is a favorites menu. We can select one of the favorites that it has set up for us, but if at any time we want to add a specific location that we go to very frequently, say my movies folder, then I can just right click on it and select favorite. And now at any time I can jump over into my movies folder, finding it really quickly. The next favorite feature is to actually favorite parts of your footage that you really like. This makes it very quick and easy to edit out of the browser. So let's say that I wanna find a portion of video that I like, I'll push I and then I can push O and all I need to do to favorite it is push F. You'll notice that there's a green bar now at the top indicating that that portion has been favorited. And you can favorite multiple parts of a single shot. I could push I and O once again and favorite the secondary portion of the video. So you can go through making selections with I and O to find your favorite parts of your video, making it much faster when it comes time to actually create the edit. Now that I have all these favorites created, I can just go up to all clips and only show my favorites, which we can also achieve with Control F. And so now all of those favorited pieces of video will be individualized clips that we can quickly click and drag down onto the timeline. The third favorite feature you need to be aware of is the fact that you can favorite colors. What I mean by that is let's say with my subscribe text, I have a very frequent color that I change the face to. So let's say I wanna change this. So let's say I always have a specific blue that I select. Maybe I'll drag that over to the blue side and I don't wanna make that selection every single time. Opening up your color palette, you can actually go over here to the swatches section and you'll notice these three dots on the far right. Clicking on that, we can create a whole new palette and you'll notice that it's automatically added in that color that I just previously selected. So we could rename this color to be blue or whatever you wanna call it. Then if I need to add in another color, we can go ahead and find that color somewhere here on the color spectrum. Going back over into our swatches, we can add that and rename it to whatever we want. So we'll just say that this is our orange slash yellow color. So at any time that I need to change the color, I can quickly make that selection. And you'll notice that I've actually gone in and created a Final Cut Bro preset so now I can quickly find all of my branded colors here just with the click of a button. Now, if you find that your color palette has been named as unnamed, you can just click these three dots, click on rename and call it whatever you want. After that, you'll be good to go. What if there's a specific style that you always set up your text to be? For example, you always choose the Roboto font. You always make it nice and bold. You increase the size up to 288, but you also always want it to have a drop shadow you want that drop shadow to be full opacity, you don't want it to have any blur, and you want the distance always at this 26 mark, plus you always want it to be a dark orange. But once you've done it one time, you can actually just come up to this large button at the top, and you'll notice that we can save either the format attributes, the appearance attributes, or all format and appearance attributes. So your format is going to be dictated by your fonts all the way down to the scale. And then your appearance is all going to be under 3D text, face, outline, glow, and drop shadow. So depending on what you want to save, you can select either option. I typically just select save all format and appearance attributes. And now I can just label this as whatever I want. So I'll just call it subscribe. And so now anytime that I add in a brand new title, I can go ahead and select it and then just find that preset set up here. You'll notice that it's automatically set the size, the font, the alignment, and it's also added in my face and drop shadow. All I need to do from that point is just type in whatever I want and it will take on those attributes and then I can adjust the scaling accordingly. This is gonna save you an enormous amount of time if you use a lot of titles. Now, I would like to add, if you ever happen to have a whole bunch of titles up in this title inspector and you're tired of looking at them, maybe you're not using them anymore, it is a little bit annoying to get rid of them. All you need to do is go over to your finder, go up to go, push and hold option on your keyboard and you'll notice this library option. From there, you're gonna need to open application support then just look up motion, double click on that to open it, go to library, and then at the bottom you'll see text styles. In here you'll see all of the styles of the text that you've wanted. You can just select it, 
push command delete to get rid of it. And now when you restart Final Cut Pro, that preset will no longer be there. Now, another great way to favorite stuff inside of Final Cut Pro is to create favorite effects presets. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a very specific LUT that you always use in your project. Well, we can go over to our effects, go to all video and effects and look up custom LUT. Then we can go ahead and apply whatever LUT we typically like to work with. I want to get this footage back to Rec 709. Then I can push Command 6 and just add in a basic color grade. I'm going to make this look really bad so we can see it clearly. Maybe I always want this color wheels to be above that custom LUT. And we could even rename this to be Color Destroyer. But maybe I rely on this specific preset all of the time and I don't wanna to have to dial in all of these effects every single time. Well, we can just go down to Save Effects Preset. Of course, in here we can call this whatever we want. So I'll just call it Favorite Color Grade. And now this is where the favoriting comes into play. We can open up the categories. By default, you're not gonna have this star faves category like I do. What I did to get that is scroll to the very bottom and select new category. In here, I recommend you add in an emoji so it places it at the very top of the stack here in your effects categories. So you can get that with control command space or if you have the little globe icon on your keyboard, you can push that and that will bring up the emoji keyboard. Now we can add in whatever emoji we want. So I'll just add in this little icon here and we could just call it favorite. Then I can push create and we can make sure we're selecting the proper effects that we want from there and push save. That has now just created a favorites category here on the right side and we can see that that favorite color grade here is ready at any time. So if this clip didn't have any effects on it, we could just click and drag, and now we have our color destroyer color wheels here and the custom LUT all set up for us with that LUT automatically loaded in. If you ever need to get rid of an effects preset, it's very simple. You can just right click on it and select reveal and finder. You can see that here and we can just push command delete. And now when we restart Final Cut Pro, we won't see this favorites category here, which will clean up our workspace in a nice way. Another really great system for creating favorites is to create a favorites library. What I mean by that is let's go up to file, new and select new library. We'll just call this the favorites library. And you're gonna wanna put this somewhere on your computer that you can access at all times. That way, if you've transferred drives or anything like that, you're not running into issues where you can't find this project. So I I recommend just saving it somewhere like your movies folder. From there, we can push save. Now I'm gonna create a whole new project. We'll just call it the favorites project. And I recommend setting your video settings and everything at what you typically like to edit with. So if you usually edit at 4K, 2398, then those are the settings you're gonna wanna use. From there, we'll push okay. Now that I'm in this project, I'm actually just gonna lay down a gap clip with option and W and we can set this with control D to however long we want. So we'll just set it to an hour. Now that we have the super long gap clip, we can lay down our various favorites that we like to use all the time. So let's jump on over into our titles and let's say that in our titles, I have my keyboard shortcuts and I'll just drag this down onto the timeline. We could zoom in here to see that keyboard shortcut. Now, if I ever wanted to create a favorites of this title, we could go ahead and make all the changes necessary. So let's say that I always want this to say, copy and paste and I always want that to be control and C and then maybe I can resize this down just a little bit. So now that I have this preset, I could actually just go in and add in a nice little marker. Let's rename this to be copy and paste. That way at any time I could jump into my index, look under tags and see the copy and paste preset. So whenever I want to use this in a project, I can push command C. We'll jump on over into the video I'm currently working on and we can command V. And so now I have this handy little template all pre-made for me, which I can use over and over again. I just need to leave this favorites library open at all times. You could get super creative with this, add in sound effects, change the colors, pretty much anything you could possibly need. And once you've opened that favorites library at any time, we can go ahead and jump back in the timeline history refine it and then jump back forward. So hopefully this speeds up your workflow in one way or another. If it does, consider pressing that like button as it does help me tremendously. And you may wanna check out this video where I show you 10 top tier title tips for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.